For the following exercises, find the average rate of change of each function on the interval specified. All right, so just remember that uh, average rate of change down here, all right, is simply the slope of a straight line that connects two points on a graph. So uh, for example, let's say we had a particular set of axes here, and let's just pretend you, you, know, you had a certain graph. Let's just pretend the graph looks like this. Okay. If you wanted to find the average rate of change, let's say, from this point to this point, all you would have to do is just draw a straight line between the two and find the slope. That's it. You got to find the slope of this line, and that slope represents the average rate of change. Now, it's easy to see this graphically. However, um, we can also do this algebraically. Remember that slope is this formula down here at the bottom, change in y over change in x. So as long as I know two points on a graph, whether I know that graphically using, using a graph, right, visually, or if I do that algebraically by using a formula, it doesn't matter as long as I have two points, all right? So we're gonna do this one though algebraically. So basically, um, when we have p of x is equal to 3x plus 4, on this interval, they are telling us the x values of the two points. This value here represents x1, we'll call it. And this value over here, where it says 2 plus h, represents x2. So all we have to do is take each x value, plug it in here for x, and then find the corresponding y value, or aka p of x in this case. All right, those are the steps I listed down here. So let's do that. So we'll have p of two, is equal to three times two, because I plugged in two for x there, plus four. What does this become? Well, this is simply six plus four, and that's equal to 10. So remember, this is essentially the y value, okay? P of two is essentially saying y. So your x1 value was two, and the y1 is 10. So this is the first point on your graph. Now we can do the same thing for this set, okay? Now remember, all we have to do is plug this in for anywhere we see x. So now this is going to be, I'll put it down a little lower, so this is p of now 2 plus h. Sounds funky, right? But it's not that bad. Just plug in here 2 plus h for your x value. And now, uh, why don't we just simplify, okay, for, for right now. So this is 2 plus h is equal to, so then we distribute the 3, right, to each piece in the inside the parenthesis. So this would give us 6 plus 3h, right, then plus 4, and I can combine the 4 and the 6, right, that would give me a total of 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to erase this and just write 10, 10 plus 3h, right, so this is indeed the y value. Now here's the x value, 2 plus h, comma, and here is your y value, 10 plus 3h. Looks strange, but those are the values, all right? So now, uh, all we need to do, since we have these two points, we just gotta throw it on into the slope formula and just be done with it, okay? So now let's do that. So here we, uh, so here we have now slope is equal to y2 minus y1, right? So let's call this y2 and this one x2. Let's call this y1 and this x1. I'm basically following right the order of what I stated at the top. So the y2 value is going to be 10 plus 3h minus my y1 value of 10. And that's all now divided by my x2 value, which says 2 plus h, minus my x1 value of 2. So what does this simplify to? Well, notice the 10s cancel and the 2s will cancel leaving us with just 3, 3h three over h. Now what else cancels? Oh, the h's cancel. Ah, very interesting. So it doesn't even matter what this h is out here, okay? The average rate of change for this particular function is three over this interval, okay? Remember, the intervals are always x coordinates. All right, so now let's run through the next one. So let's call this one your x1 and this one will be your x2. Okay, let's find k of now three, that's your first x value. So simply plug in three anywhere you see your x. 
then simplify as necessary. So here we're going to have, this works out to be 12 minus two, that's 10. So the first coordinate will be your x value is three and the y value that got spit out was 10. So here's your first coordinate. Let's do it again for the second one now, okay? So here we have k of now three plus h. No big deal, just plug in anywhere you see x, three plus h now, and just do some distributions. So the k of three plus h will equal 12 plus four h minus two, right? All I did was I distributed the four to each piece in the parentheses, and now you can simplify this, all right? So here we have k times three plus h, and not, what am I talking about, three times k plus h? This is, this is k of three plus h, all right? Notice the notations get a little, they, they're very similar, okay? That's a little h there. And uh, when we combine the terms here, this is gonna be 10 plus four h. All right, now what I can do is I can simplify this down a little more, but I'm actually, I'm just gonna leave it right now. Okay, I'm gonna do all my simplifications at the end. So my coordinate here is, this was my x value, uh, three plus h, and this is my y value, 10 plus four h. Okay, great. So here are the two points, right? We call this x1 and therefore this will be y1. This is x2 and this is now y2. Let's plug it on into our slope formula. Here's the y2 value. This is gonna be 10 plus 4h minus our y1 value of just 10. Great. Here's our x2 value. This says three plus h minus then our x1 value of three. Great, how does this simplify now? Well, lo and behold, the 10 cancels with the 10, and the three cancels with the three. We're essentially gonna have four H divided by H left over, but what do you notice happened over on the left? Same thing, the H's will cancel as well. So we're left with a value here of four. Not bad, right? All right, so let's take a look at the last one now, all right? So here we have our interval. So we have uh, our first X value. Why don't we call this X1? All right, we'll just call that X1. And this one will be our X2. So now all we have to do is plug in these values for x and then just find the uh, average rate of change. But wait a minute, you might be saying to yourself, wait, I'm gonna take x and plug it in for x, isn't it the same thing? Yeah, it is, right? It is the same thing, so don't overthink it. It just is this, all right? So the first coordinate will be x, because that's the x1 value, and then this is the y value, 2x squared plus one. Easy peasy, all right? The next one now, um, is going to uh, be, so we're gonna take f of now, so now it's gonna be f of x plus h, x plus h, and now here we're gonna plug that in, okay? So it's gonna be two times x plus h squared plus one. All right, now, why don't we, um, we can, we, why don't we foil this on out a little bit, all right? So when we foil this on out, it's gonna become, I need my little more room, I think. Uh, X plus H is going to equal two X squared plus two X H plus H squared. And remember this whole thing is added to one, okay? Now, um, I can also distribute the two and I think I'm gonna do that actually for this problem, all right? I can also distribute the two. So when we do that, all of these coefficients, this is gonna be two x squared, this is gonna be four x h, and then there's gonna be two h squared, okay? Just because I'm running out of space, I'm going to just write it on down in my, um, in my uh, coordinate here. So this is the x2 value, x plus h, comma, and this is the y2, including the one that's the y2 value. So this is gonna be two x squared plus four x h plus two h squared plus one. Okay, so now we have our two coordinates. They look pretty pretty mean and nasty, right? Uh, but they're fairly easy, all right? Just follow the patterns. So this is x1 and this will be y, well, just seeing if you pay attention, that's y1. This is gonna be x2 and this will be y2. So now let's plug it in for the slope. Here's the y2 value. So we have two x squared plus four x h plus h, excuse me, two h squared 
plus one, right, plus one, then minus your y1 value. So the minus the whole thing, right? So I'm gonna put that in brackets, minus two x squared plus one. And now this whole thing will be divided by x2, which is x plus h, minus your x1, which is just h. So notice a couple things cancel. The two x's down here cancel. The, this is really a minus x squared, so excuse me, a minus two x squared, so this will cancel with this, as well as this, when this negative gets distributed, it's now a negative one, and this is a positive one, so those two also cancel, okay? So what we're left with now is we are left with, uh, and I'm just gonna reorganize the terms we are left with, by the way, on the top, okay? I'm gonna bring the, uh, the h squared value first, so it's gonna be two h squared, plus 4xh, all over now h. I realize that between these two, I can factor out, if I wanted to, I don't necessarily have to, I can factor out a 2h, okay? If, if we wanted to. Um, doesn't matter, you don't necessarily have to. I'm gonna factor out though 2h. And from here I realize I'm left with h plus now uh, 2x, okay? And now we can divide this whole thing by h, and I realize that we can cancel now the h here and here. So what we are left with is now going to be 2h plus 2x, okay? Or you could have uh, distributed this, it doesn't matter, meaning you would have been left with 2h plus 4x. I don't know, either, either one is fine, okay? Guys, thanks for tuning in, all right? Hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe. And if we helped you out at all, uh, help us out by telling your friends, all right? If they're in need of help, we're providing a lot of videos here. So we got more coming. And uh, yeah, we hope to see you soon. Well, teach you soon, because I can't see you. Take care.